you need. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. At this time, we're going to change the order of service and turn it over to Sister Rose. Let's give her a hearty amen as she comes. We need somebody to pray for us, don't we? Yes. Pray for me. <laughs> Glory be to God. He's so good and so wonderful. Thank God for the victory. We're so happy for all of you that are here tonight. God is always doing something for his people. In spite of the situations that's going on, he's still working by his power. Yes. Thank you, P. <laughs> Whoa, it's good to be here tonight. It's been a good day, tough day, rough day. Yes, I thought I was up to after midnight last night and then finally go to sleep to about two. And, and then I got out of bed to... Looked at the clock like I was crazy, like, <laughs> I've been feeling crazy all day, but I thank God, I need to go to sleep. <laughs> Will y'all excuse me, just let me go home and take a nap. <laughs> That's not going to happen, is it? Wouldn't that be funny if I said, <clears throat> if I said, y'all, I really love you, appreciate you and everything in the Lord, but uh, I'm going to go home and take a nap and I'll see you next week. <laughs> That wouldn't work. No, not by a long shot. But it's good to be here tonight. He has done so much for me as he has for you. And he continues to bless again and again. We just got to keep going. Keep pushing it. I, I said to Amos, I was coming to church. I said, Amos, you know what I feel like if I just let go, I'll just fly away. He said, don't do that. Don't do that. See, yeah, sometimes you feel like you just want to fly away. You see why David said, if I had the wings of a dove, I'd fly away to be at rest. But you just can't do that. You got to finish this race. You got to finish it. And he's doing great and mighty things. God is so good and so wonderful. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the 53rd chapter of Isaiah. Father, we're grateful tonight for your blessings, for all that you've done for us, for the privilege it is to come to your house. Help your people to look up and to serve you. Never looking back, never wanting to turn it loose, but keeping their eyes on you and pressing toward the prize. I pray, God, that your divine and perfect will would be done. I pray that you would touch the lives of your people, strengthen those that are weak and those that are bowed down. Raise them up, God. Heal that which is, needs healing. And everything that's turned out of the way, turn it straight. And we'll give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. <laughs> The 53rd chapter, y'all got to fast this week. Well, I'll tell you what it is when I'm gone so I don't get funny looks. Um, <laughs> the third verse said, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised. And we esteemed him not. I want to preach to you a little while tonight. It is a bad, bad thing to be rejected. That's a terrible feeling. Especially if you care about somebody or you love them, for them to reject you is a terrible feeling. And, she, and the word is saying here, he was despised, not only rejected, they hated him. And rejected of men. They didn't want nothing to do with him. Understand that God sent his son into this world to die for all of us. And when he got here, nobody wanted him. You know how horrible that is? It's that I'm willing to pay the ultimate price, but because nobody wants me. Uh, to this day, people are still rejecting the son of God. To this day. Ball fields are full of people going to watch the game. But you can't get them to fill up the church. 
You can't give him to give, really give it things to him and God. I mean, he's somewhere out there, and really none of this stuff with God makes any difference. And I hate to see people that don't take the time with God to say, Lord, I love you and I thank you for what you've done because all of us, he didn't owe us nothing. And the fact that he was willing to do it. See, man was alienated from God by his own doing. Because man chose to take another path. And God said, I'm going to bring you back. I was reading this this week in the scriptures. They talk about how many times he begged Israel. And he said, I'm going to whoop you and I'm going to do this to you. And then it says, but he turned he turned to come back to him and, and told him, I, I want to do this for you. I want to do that. And, and they just kept going away. And I wonder sometimes, how do you keep going away when somebody that loves you wants to be with you? wants to help you but you'll keep saying no not now this has been the case for many people they're constantly saying not now well maybe later well I don't really have the time right now I just got to wait until see how things go and God is sitting there looking down at you thinking do you understand I gave my son do you know I gave everything I had to you and you still don't have time for him we don't make time for God. We make time for work. We make time for a lot of things in this world. We don't make time for God. I'm trying to understand, how would you feel as a parent if you had given your only child for the benefit of somebody else's life, but they don't, they don't really want it? And you say, but my son died for you. And you're looking at him thinking, you don't want, you don't want to do or love me back or be here or whatever. I gave my son. My only son. Sometimes going through the course of a day, I feel this sense of sadness in the heart of God when he looks down at this world and see people that just really don't care about him. They care about a lot of things, but they don't care about him. So the scripture says he was despised, he was hated and rejected of men. They don't want God. Some of them said, no, I don't have any room in my life for that. My brother told me that one time. He said, Rose, I'm so busy. I don't have time for church. I don't have time to put all that in in motion. I just don't have time to do it. I just think, well, I'm sure God was very busy. He could have looked down and said, well, I'm busy. I'd like to get with you and help you out, but I really can't. Because I'm looking over a whole big world here. My hands are full. Suppose he had said that. Where would all of us be tonight? We wouldn't be here. I'm grateful every day of my life that I wake up and I can say, thank you, God, for what you've done for me. Because you didn't owe that to me. No. I was lost. I was in darkness. I couldn't find my way out. I was sad. I was depressed. And now you reached out for me and said, I see Rose. Come here, Rose. I don't know about you, but I appreciate it. Where he came to the ghetto of St. Louis, Missouri. In the projects, he came by to see about me. We're talking about royalty here. He don't owe you nothing. But you stopped by to give me a chance. And what can I render to you for all that you've done for me? I'm not going to reject. Rejection is a terrible feeling. So when God looks down and sees that I gave my son to make everything right, and look at him. They're going on with their life as if I didn't need you. I didn't ask you to come anyway. They're treating it at a distance. Stop. For a minute, I guarantee you there's not a person in this room tonight that in some part of your life you experience rejection. People that you cared about. People that you loved. But they didn't want to be bothered with you. That's a terrible feeling. One time Janelle said she was out making contacts and somebody, but they didn't act like they wanted to come. She said, I can't stand the rejection. I said, no. Stand it. He did. Constantly. Can you imagine all these years have passed and he's still reaching out to me and wanting to be there with me, wanting to help him. Still want to love on you. Still want to help you in times of trouble. He wants to be your best friend. He wants to do all these things. Come on. You've got to love him enough to say, 
God, what else can I do for you? I don't want you to get the feeling that I don't care. I don't want you to get the feeling that it doesn't matter. It does matter. That you are there for me. Thank you every day. Because if you wasn't there for me, I could have never gone through all the things I've gone through in my life. I went through it because he was there. And then he gave me a promise. Lo, I'm with you always. Even to the end of the world, I'll never leave you or forsake you. I have got promises upon promises from him. And he owed me nothing. <sighs> Makes me feel sad inside. The word reject simply means to refuse, to have, to take, or recognize. I don't even recognize him. To refuse to accept him, to discard, or useless, or, or uh, unsatisfactory. I don't. To treat him like he's useless? I don't know how you can go there. Because he's of use to me. I got to have him. When I look back over my life and all the years that I've been on this planet. And think about where would I be if Jesus had loved me? Where would I be if he didn't care? Where would I be if he didn't sacrifice his life that I might have life? He became poor that I might become rich. Yes. I owe him everything. Every day of my life, times when you don't feel like move, making another step, you make one because he made it for you. I mean, when the load got so heavy, he fell under the load of the cross. You know, he still continued to go forward. He had to have some assistance from Simon, and he helped him. But let me tell you something. He never gave up on me. Somewhere, somewhere in the plan of God, there I was. There's Rose. I'm going to go for her. I believe he did that for everybody, but everybody don't appreciate it. Everybody don't really care. I care that he cared about me. That he picked me up out of a pit that nobody else could pick me up. Nobody else could make the changes in my life that he's done. My God, keep going, Rose, keep going. That's what keeps me going. Is that, my God, if you had stopped because you was too tired. If you had stopped because there just seems more than you could comprehend. If you had stopped, where would I be today? Oh, thank God for the victory that he's here. You got to look at yourself and say, how many people have, have, have you been rejected by in your life? Or, or, and vice versa, how many people have you rejected? And pushed away when they tried to love on you. When they tried to show you love, you pushed away from God help us today. I remember when Sarah first got saved, I don't know what her background was. I know she's real close to mom and papa. Her, her mom uh, died in a car accident with the little brother. Was he four, Sarah? Four years old. And so uh, what all happened in her life, I don't know. But I remember when I tried to win her to the Lord and finally did through much struggle and prayer. <laughs> I got her there. But I used to go up to Sarah and want a hug, and she said, mm-mm. How dumb are you? Everybody wants some love. We all need it. Animals need love. Birds of the air need love. All of us have that need to be loved, to be cared about. And I remember when every time I reached out, she would just stiffen up. I'm thinking, what makes that happen? Because I don't think she really knew what it meant to have love. She was with mom and papa, and they were good to her, but do you know what love is? See, my grandmother was not a woman that was going to walk around and hug you and, and kiss on you. That never happened, but I knew she loved me. So sometimes I would go up there to her and, and hug her and say, Grandma, I love you. She said, Lucia, say what you want. <laughs> that's, supposed to, that's supposed to be her way of saying, what is it, baby? We have, to, we have to define to when our parents say something. Oh, they don't mean it that way. They're, they're, they're just saying they love you. But in, 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 in essence, she never said I love you. But I know she did when she took me out of a courtroom when I was six years old and was getting ready to be put into a foster home, me and, my, me and my younger sister. At 70 years old, she said, Judge, give them to me. So I know she had to care about me. She said, don't put them in a home with strangers. Let me have it. You already raised 10 kids. Who wants seven more? Who wants two more? But she, she went after it. 
I knew she loved me. I didn't always feel that she did when she was chastising me and whooping me. I didn't feel like it. I wanted to whoop her back and, and all that stuff. But you know what? She cared about me. I know that. And sometimes I, she would say to me, could you go over to the ice cream store, baby, and get Grandma two bits of ice cream? I think if I remember right, two bits was a quarter. Oh, bring Grandmother some ice cream. Yes, ma'am. I'd run all the way to the store and run all the way back to get her ice cream. And thank you, honey. Thanks for doing it for Grandma. But that was about the size of it. You weren't getting ready to get no mushy stuff going on. That wasn't going to happen. Uh-uh. And so, but you know what? It wasn't good. It wasn't healthy at the time that it happened to me because what it did, it made me have this void, this hole somewhat, that I needed... I needed to feel this coming back. And I knew she did, but what about a touch? What about a hug? What about just a little kiss? Didn't get that. Then when I finally met my husband, I think I wanted him to do everything that wasn't done for me as a kid, which was impossible. I just want to be loved. I just want to, somebody tell me, do you love me? Yes. Do you love me? Yes. Do you love me? Do you really love me? Yes. Y'all say, how many more times do you want me to say that? <laughs> I'm trying to get what I lost, what I didn't have. So maybe this man will do it for me. He never could feel it. He loved me to death, but he couldn't feel the void that was there from a child having not, having not felt it. And I made it a point. I am going to change if I ever have kids if ever, if ever I have kids I want us to be affectionate to each other that we can talk to each other it's a shame we try to hug your kid you know no I want you to hug me back and God was saying I love you now when I sent my son to die for you all I want is you to love me back extend yourself for me be willing to be spent be willing to go the extra mile why not Nothing is worse than when somebody was willing to do it all for you and then time come for you to do something, they don't want to do it. That hurts. <laughs> I remember a lady, Sister Winston, uh, in Oklahoma, her husband was a preacher, but he played on his wife and he left with his sister and he got a baby by this sister and he was gone for some years and, and uh, uh, I felt sorry for her. And I remember one time she came to me and asked me, could I help her? financially I said sure I asked Charles about it and see what we can do and I did and, and we and we helped her Charles when it took out a loan for her and I, and she said well I don't know how I'm gonna pay it back I said I'm not worried about you paying it back and, and if you ever get it and, and you feel like you must do it then well and good but I'm not expecting it back <clears throat> so she still wanted to pay it back for some reason and so she said, if it's okay, can I pay this amount of money? I said, you don't have to pay anything if you don't want to. But whatever you want, that's up to you. Then the time came around where we needed a, a little bit of money. And I said, now, uh, uh, Minister Winston at this time had come back to the Lord and gave his life to the Lord, every, 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 had, uh, had gone back to his wife, and they was living happily ever after. We needed something. I don't remember what it was. It, you know, being in the military, you always need some money. And so I, uh, I thought, well, I'll just go to Sister Winston and ask her, can, she, can I borrow a few dollars? And she said, honey, we wouldn't be able to do it. I said, you know what I went through to finally get up enough nerve to ask you for? And then you tell me, honey, we won't be able to do it. You know what I was thinking about? Well, I borrowed some for you. He worked for the post office. They made good money. And uh, I was like, you just turned me down like that? That's rejection. It's a feeling. Because I never like to ask nobody for nothing. And if I did ask you for something, I rehearsed it in the mirror several times. And this is what I'm going to say. I'm going to say, oh, can you help me? Can I get to borrow some money for you? No, that don't look right. Okay. Hi, how are you? Can I borrow $30? That don't sound right. 
And I will go through it over and over again because I hate to ask. That feeling when somebody tell you, no, I can't, that's not a good feeling. So if you've ever been in any place in your life, be it in a relationship or whatever it may be, that you felt this sense that somebody, they rejected me. After I was there for them, after I reached out to them, they were there for me. What happened? What happened that they just took off and didn't care? Nothing is worse than that feeling. So it says he was rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He knew what it felt like to be to grieve. He felt all this for me and for you. So that when I go through something like that, he understands why I'm telling him, God, please help me. I don't want to be rejected. Come on, reach out to God. He never rejects anybody. He never does. And so we got to reach out and say, Lord, I just want you to touch me. And when he touches you, there's nothing in the world like it. I was getting ready for church this evening, and I, I was so, 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 so tired. And I got to the, to the garage, and I thought, boy, I'm tired of this life. I'm just tired of this life. I'm, I... I know I must fight. I never stop fighting. And in, in many cases, I'm fighting for someone else, not me. So tired. But somehow, <clears throat> by the grace of God, you get up and you push it anyway. So tired, you want to say to somebody, take it, see you later. Can't do it. Because my debt that I owe him is so big. And so if I spit to the last breath, I still would owe him. You got to keep pushing. You got to keep pushing your way. You got to keep saying, no, I got to do this. And Juana looked at me tonight and I said, Mama, you look so tired. I said, oh, I am. Get, get very little sleep. If I probably could go to sleep and sleep for three days without waking up, I'd probably get up and just dance through the house. <laughs> it's not happening. So, when I look at that, but I'm, I'm, I'm reminded, the Bible says we should consider him. Least we become weary and faint in our minds because we didn't consider what he went through. So when you feel like you got a reason to complain, when you feel like you got a reason to do what you do, you got to remember him. Consider him who was willing to go to the cross in your behalf. He hung there for me. He hung there for you. Come on. We got to say, Lord, I can make it. That's how we make it. Because when you consider what he went through and the difficult time that he went through, I'm telling you, it makes it easier. It makes it easier. And it's amazing. By the time I get to the pulpit, I don't know I'm tired. What is that? That's God. I don't know that I'm tired. My kids are forever trying to take care of me and, you know, I think if they could pick me up and carry me, they would do that too. You better not try that one. So, I don't want to be rejected. Maybe you want to go to somebody and just talk to them about something, but you don't want them. You don't want the person to treat you like you're stupid. You know how many people go ahead and act like they know something because they don't want to be treated stupid. You say, I didn't know what they meant by that. Why don't you ask them? Well, I want them to think I'm stupid. Go ahead and think I'm stupid. If I want to say what you're talking about, I'm going to ask you what it is. Take a moment. I don't know what that word you, you just used. What does that mean? No, I ain't going to say that. They just think I'm stupid. And? But we're so worried about nobody wants it. It's pain to be rejected. We don't want that. We don't want it from anybody. But in this life, you get that. You're not going to escape it. People are going to reject you at times that you really, really, really feel like, I need a friend. See, no matter what, everybody ain't going to agree with you and everybody ain't going to walk with you. Everybody ain't going to like you. Get, learn to say that's okay. You don't like me? Oh, okay. Anything else? <laughs> learn to move on. I learned over the years to draw a tough to grow a tough skin and, and realize they're going to hit you, they're going to do this, they're going to do that, prepare yourself. It's not supposed to be a flower bed of ease. It's supposed to be difficult. It's supposed to put you through the fire and give you a difficult time. But, hey, come on out shouting anyway. 
That's what you got to do because rejection is a terrible feeling. What it does to people is beyond anything I can describe to you tonight. It's over the top. But you have got to say, wait a minute. I got to keep going. And quit believing because one person rejected you that everybody's going to do it. You know how many people live in a cage just like that? Well, I've, I've been rejected so much I don't do nothing. No, come on out. Everybody ain't going to reject you. Everybody ain't going to treat you bad. Everybody's not going to be your enemy. Come on out. Make up in your mind, no. It's a terrible feeling. And you can't be in the ministry and not, and not feel rejection. That's impossible. People don't give back to you what you give to them. But you got to keep pushing on out there anyway. Because if you judge by what this person did to you or that person, you're going to stop at a lot of things. You're not going to do it. I'm not doing anything. Last time I did that, look what they did to me. Pass that place. And go again. In spite of this, Jesus kept coming back, coming back to us and coming back to us. Many of us went years and didn't serve him. Many of us didn't want him. To be honest, we didn't want him. We wanted to be something else and go somewhere else. And he kept coming back and standing in line. He was there all the time waiting for you to give him a chance. Waiting for you so I can help you. But you always turn to everybody else. You don't turn to him. <laughs> it's important that you do. He said, I'm not going to be humiliated by everybody. I don't have to take that. You're going to take some humiliation in this life. Jesus took it. They humiliated him. But you know what? He didn't let that stop what he was going to come to do. I mean, he came in a humble way. He didn't even have a, a real bed to sleep in. I mean, he comes in a time that, that uh, he's put in a, a, in a little, in some swaddling clothes or whatever, but he didn't even really have a place. And when the mother went looking for a place, her and Joseph, there was no room for him. Don't forget that. When you don't give him room in your life, believe me, believe me, that's a bad feeling. He feels it because he's like us. We're made in his image. So therefore, he feels it when we reject him. And we say, well, well not, not now, Lord. Maybe later. No, wait a minute. Do, do I matter? Am I important? I'm the one going to see you through everything. Why are you pushing away? Love for another person is the greatest thing that we can have and it's even greater when we love God because we can say to him, I care, and I'm careful how I walk every day. Why? Because I don't want to be rejected. He went to his own, the scripture says, and his own received him not. Who was his own? His family. People really can get a fall apart when family don't like you. I'm used to it. I said, well, they, don't, they ain't been liking me my whole life, so let me go on and find something else to do. Don't sit back there going through issues. I don't want that. Jesus gets this from man every day. One minute they're treating him nice. I love the Lord with all my heart. And they say, I want to know why God let this happen to me. You ought to get bopped right in the mouth. What do you mean? If you care about him, you don't keep switching and changing. You love him every day. I wouldn't give a nickel for these half-done Christians. They're never going to become full, fully developed. They're so busy doing nothing. But when, he, when you look at what he went through, and they say it was so bad that we hid our face from him, it was so bad. And that he was despised, and we didn't even esteem him. We didn't even want to give him honor. We didn't even want to lift him up. He's going through all that stuff for you and feel nothing about it. You got to feel that pain, that, that, that suffering he went through and all that happened to him. You got to feel that. Can you feel it? If you don't, you don't care. There's a part of you that says, I don't have time for all that. One day you wish you had time for all that. Yes. So when I look at this, I'm, I, am, I am definitely encouraged to keep walk because I consider him. They despised and rejected him even now. I just thought, no, that's not what I'm looking for. You got all these issues in your life and you ain't looking for him. How dumb are you? Ain't nobody else going to fix your problem. People won't say, honey, don't bring them to me. I got my own. I need somebody who cares enough to stop and say, uh, look, I love you. I care about you. Don't push me 
a way in time of need. I need you to put your arms around me. I need you to love me. I need to know you care. It makes all the difference in the world. But when you reject somebody and push them away, I don't even want to think about it. I just don't want to go there today. I don't want to, you know, I'm not into that God stuff. I hate that. I'm not into that God stuff where he was into you stuff. And you wasn't even worth it. And he was willing to give everything he had for you. And you tell me I'm not into that God stuff. You need to get into the God stuff. He was pushed away. People didn't like him. I remember reading about the miracle that he did and, and the people went back in, in town and they were talking about the miracle and, and they were shouting and happy about it. And when they went back and told them about it, they said, well, let's go see. When they go see him, you know what they said? We need you to get, out of, get, get away from us. You just heard something good that he did for somebody. And now you're telling them, we just want you to depart out of our coast. And would have thrown him over the hill if they could have. Can you imagine somebody wanting to throw you out when you've been nothing but good? Nothing is worse than that. I need to believe that you at least have a little bit of like for me after all that I've done. I remember when we helped a lady in the church um, and my daughters went over and helped her get in the house and put up pictures and do all this stuff. And then she said, you know what? I never really cared for y'all. I thought, what? You never cared for us? We just done all this stuff for you, put you in the house and helped you and everything else and right to our face, you said, I really didn't, really didn't, I don't care for you. I said, oh, you got to move. <laughs> I mean, you really got to move out of that house. But I'm supplementing. And you don't like them? You better try liking me. You going to wish you had? And then I'm standing there with the hands reached out. Come on, give me some more. Come on. I thought, how, how are my daughter supposed to feel? Lisa ran all day long that Saturday, going, getting everything she needed for the house, all tight, everything for the kitchen, everything about all this stuff. And she said, I, I, I never cared for you. I told my daughter, I said, she's getting ready to move. She don't care for you after you ran all day? That's a sense of... I don't appreciate nothing you do no matter what it is. I don't appreciate it. Come on. God has said, I was willing to give my life. Do you appreciate any of that? Does it matter? No, it doesn't. It don't matter. Listen to the scripture. It says, he sent his servants, the prophets, and the religious leaders took his uh, prophets and beat one and killed another and stoned another his son the heir of the religious uh, 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 the heir and the religious leaders they knew he was the messiah so they killed him he said I sent you all these people and you went away he said surely if I send you my son surely you will receive him but they said this is an heir here let's kill him and they crucified him and hung him on the cross. Understand something. When you send everything you got and you turn away, this is uncomprehendable. I could never, never think of anybody in this church in a negative sense unless they do something really stupid. I thought, oh, when Jeanette was testifying tonight, I thought, you know what I thought about? Boy, she always been so good to my family. I sit down with the girl. I said, you know what? Jeanette was always good to us. I mean, you could count on her when she's tired. At Christmas time, she's a dream come true. And that girl decorates and put up trees and other people help her. But I'm talking about her right now. So don't get that. You know, I mean, remember me. I didn't forget you. You came too, but let me, could I talk about her? Is that okay? I thought, wow, she's going through all this stuff right now. And I was on the bike just pedaling away by myself with nobody out there with me. And after a while, I called. I said, y'all come out here for a minute. 
You know what? I was talking to the Lord about it. And all of a sudden, do this. Do that. Take the load off. Take the pressure off. Can I count on you to at least do that? Well, he's coming here to take our pressure off. He's here to lift our burdens so we don't have to labor under. I said, she's not going to have to walk this road. Not on my watch, she's not. Because, see, you got to get concerned about the other person more than you are yourself. But if it's all about you, God can't tell you to do nothing anyway because you're just so way out there. Take care of this. I didn't, do, I didn't need to do nothing but sit in the chair and say, we're going to do such and such. And you ain't seen screaming and hollering straight up and down in the floor. Almost stopping screaming and hollering, jumping straight up and down the floor. I put up with the noise. <laughs> Go ahead. I understand you're happy. That the, that the burden is going to be lifted. Don't, don't carry this heavy burden. And the Lord said, you call Joe. Call Joe and tell him, take her by the hand. Let us take her by the hand. And let's take somebody with him on the journey of prosperity. Joe said, yeah, Miss Rose, I'll help. And when Jeanette called him, she said, he said, I'm going to get off this phone for you. You're getting mushy on me. <laughs> I may accidentally start crying. Why did you get off? Take somebody with you. If God is blessing you, take somebody with you. Yes. If you're in a better shape than I am, please take me by my hand and carry me with you. Because I feel your pain. I feel your pressure. I understand where you're at. But let me see what can I do. Compassion will cause you to move. It compels you to do something. What can I do? This is bothering me like it's my problem. I got to do something. It's uncomprehendable. And you know what? I looked over at Joe tonight when she saw it. I thought, boy, it must feel good, Joe, huh? Feels good. He's not going to get real emotional. And if you try to push him there, he's going to tell you this enough. See? But I'm telling you, there's nothing like it. Okay, let's join hands. Let's join forces. If I can't do it by myself, you join with me. If you can't do it, you join with this person. And let us join together and make it happen. We can make it happen. Yes. Well, I, I, you don't need nothing else. God ain't got to do nothing for you, nothing. You just, I mean, this is great. It's a feeling of I did something to help somebody else. And I got in the midst of your pain. If I don't get into your pain, I'll never do nothing. But we sit back and say, well, oh, child, I'm doing the best I can do. You stingy joker, you. I'm just doing the best I can do. You know, if I could, I would shut up. To right. turn my sign on you tonight, shut up. <laughs> That's not true. Talk is so cheap. It's so cheap. We just, we love excuses why we can't do something. Don't give me an excuse why you can't. Show me how you can. It's going to make a difference. It's going to make a difference. And then uh, when the Lord put it together, it was all, it was so different. And it just came together like this. If you want to say, I'm going to get in there. I don't care who else did do something for you. Count on me. You know, people, there's people that got a whole lot of money more than I, than I have. And I'm telling you, they don't ever feel moved to do nothing for nobody. Just sit back and make excuses for it and feel and justify it. You're full of crap. See? He said, surely they won't kill my son. Surely they'll recognize he's my son. He's an heir. And they won't kill him. And they said, he's an heir. Let's get rid of him. All through the time that Jesus walked this earth, it was always a conspiracy at some point to get rid of him. It was always there. Stop for a minute and say, you know what? I want to be sure the Lord knows that I'm not rejecting him, that I'm not putting him somewhere else when I should have him at the forefront of my life. When Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane, and he was so heavily loaded uh, going through what he was, the suffering, the agony of the cross. And, and he said to his disciples, would you go with me and sit with me 
for an hour. They went to sleep. Well, sometimes you just need somebody to stay awake with you. You ain't asking for nothing. Could you, could you watch with me one hour? He come back. He said, for my soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Exceeding sorrowful. Can we do? They went to sleep. He went back and looked at them. It's all calling home. You know, and they bad. it's bad when you got a friend. You say, could you come over and just sit with me? And they say, yeah, I'll sit with you. <laughs> you, th you, you think that's it? I need you to be staying awake praying for me while I sleep. <laughs> Sometimes I have been sick in the past, and I'd always call Sarah, Daisy, and Norman to come over, pray for me. Pray for me. And they pray, and Daisy look up and say, you ain't going nowhere, Rose. I thought, no, I think you'll precede me. Uh, and one said, God better take Daisy first because we can't put up with Daisy after you go. <laughs> sure, Daisy would be somewhere. Ay, ay. Yeah, nobody can say that they go <laughs> No. Lord, get her first. They said, Mama, God got to get Daisy first because that's not going to work. No. And then I have to babysit Daisy till she die. It's the truth. Going through all them chains, I didn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I said, well, well, you know, once he checks out, I'm, I'm not long behind. See? But I think if we say for a moment, nobody can come around me for any length of time. And if you're not feeling good, I get it real quick. I said, what's wrong? You okay? You want to talk? Y'all don't have that privilege, but a few people like P and and different ones that's at my house all the time. It's different. Okay, you okay? Yes, mom, I'm okay. You want to talk? Mom, I'm doing okay. I said, always know you can tell me everything, P. Everything. I said, I will. Don't hold it back. Mama understands. If you're wrong, I'll rebuke you real sweet. <laughs> and if you're right, Hey, we'll do it together. Yes. We need that. That's why he said we have a high priest that is touched by the feeling of my infirmities. He feels my pain. He feels this sense of just can't hardly make it to go on. He knows what it feels like. A high priest sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding on my behalf. And on your behalf, because he feels my pain. That's why he came, to experience it for you and for me. Now I know what you feel like. So when you talk, talk to him, tell him how he feels. He knows, because he's been here. He's been here. He walked the road. He experienced it. So tonight, are you really embracing him? Or are you really just... I talked to a lady this morning in the, in the, in the prayer line, and she said, Sister Rose... I want to live right. She said, and my husband don't want me to go to the church. I said, you don't have to worry about him. Give him to God, and you go ahead and do what you got to do. I said, when I got saved, my husband didn't want to be saved. And he'd leave going to the club. I left going to church. I said, but that ain't got nothing to do with it. The bottom line is pray for the joker. Keep on going. Keep on going. Thirteen years later. He gave his heart to the Lord. But what if I had stopped? I would have lost 13 years of my saved life. No. Okay, honey, you don't want to go. Well, I don't feel like I can do it right now. I can. Because I'm a miserable soul and ain't nobody helping me but God. And I can do this. And did it. Sure, yeah, you're going to have some opposition. Surely somebody's going to be saying, you don't need to do that. Say, look, I'm grown. Use Amos' word, grown. That's what you got to do. I'm grown. I'm not your little child that you order around here. If you don't want God, so be it, but I do. Well, you better not go. I'm going. That woman at back home, her husband said, uh, she said, I'm going to church. She said, you ain't going nowhere. He went and got his gun and said, now you ain't going out that door. And she said, you know what? If you shoot me, I'm going to heaven, but if you don't, I'm going to church. <laughs> and didn't stop. You got to be a strong woman and say, look, if you want to go, amen, I would like for you to go, but if you don't, I'm going. I'm not going to reject God because you don't want him because I got 
to die for myself. I got to stand before him for me. And I can't say, Lord, my husband want to go. Well, who says he got to go? Your husband may end up going to hell. He may get saved. He may not. But in the meantime, go on. I'm, I'm not turning my back on God. That's the person I need when you, when I can't count on you. And that's the truth. And if any man hear my words and believe me, I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath not hath one that judges him. The word that I've spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. And whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Here it is. He's telling me what to say. He tells me what to do. Put this out there. Put that out there, Rose. Put this over here. You got to tell the people. Take a moment, but t take care of business. So don't let nobody make you treat God less. This, ain't no man worth that, honey. I love my husband to death for 30 some years. But I wasn't going to hell for that joker. Are you kidding me? Ain't no fun in hell. You ain't burning in the flames, tossed up and down, and, and you don't know if you'll ever see him because hell is full. And if you did, he don't want to see you. That's the place where it ain't looking for company. He said misery loves company, not in hell it don't. See, go on. You ain't, I don't have to have you by my side. I would like to. Hey. But in the meantime, I got to move on. See, don't get caught up because mama said, you know, you're going on there. I don't want you to go to that church. I said, mama, look, I, I got to make my own decision. I mean, I know you done taught me some things, but when it comes to me and God, that's me and God. It don't include you. We got to be willing to say that and don't feel bad about it. And mama said, don't you disrespect me. I said, I ain't disrespecting. I'm just telling you I'm not going to hell for you. See? He went back to his own family. He came from Nazareth. The Bible said he couldn't even do many miracles there because of their unbelief. Uh, he's just, you know, he's just Jesus. Ain't that so-and-so's brother, this one's brother? He's just Jesus. He's a carpenter's son. I'm more than a carpenter's son. See, I'm more than that. So make up in your mind, I'm not going to let you deter me. I can go. My grandmother's uh, husband, my granddaddy, told my grandmother, I'm not going down that hell hole called the church of hell hole. I'm not going down that hell hole with you. And my grandma said, you don't have to. I'm going. He beat my grandmother up one night and, and took a basket and beat her up with it. And when he got through, she wiped the face and went on out the door to church. That's where you got to be. Of course, you wouldn't have beat me. <laughs> no. Now, you may not want me to go, but beat, that's a bit much. <laughs> I ain't taking no beating. First thing I want you to do, baby, is take a seat. Don't be no fool, because I'm going to church, and I ain't going to get beat up before I get there. Charles would have never tried that with me, ever, never. His brother told him one time, said, well, Charles, you know, every woman needs a good butt kicking every once in a while. And he done beat up the sister-in-law, and, and there she is. Now, he done been out with a woman all night long. He comes home. Who gets the whoop? And she gets it. I thought, is something wrong with that picture? You've been playing on me, but I get to beat. Are you kidding me? And Charles said, yeah. Because we were staying with them at the time. Charles was getting ready to leave to go in the military. And, uh, and, and he said, yeah, man. Every once in a while, you got to give a woman a good butt whooping. And, and so I thought, I was looking over at Charles thinking, don't be no fool. <laughs> Because I'm not, I'm not getting ready to give one. There my sister-in-law limping around there. I jumped out the window. I knocked her whole kneecap off. And she's all messed up and she's still staying with me. I thought, are you sick? Charles said, Rose, I need you to shut up. I said, Charles, don't be a fool. I don't even have to raise my voice. I wouldn't even say it then. You show it, don't be crazy. He going to jump over and grab me and we wrestling through the house and wrestled down the hallway and wrestled in there on the bed, broke the bed down and everything else. I said, Charles, quit being a fool. 
Now, I'm letting you uh, throw me around a little bit. You'll feel like you're a man, but don't be no fool. <laughs> it's not, not happening, baby. Uh -uh. Stupid. I ain't never understood that you take a whooping after you grown. No way. No, baby. No. I, I can do, you can do a few things, but don't be a fool. I ain't getting no whooping. A grown woman, I got them when I was a kid. I ain't getting whooped. I just tell y'all, if you want somebody to whoop, you got some little kids. You just help to bring in the world. Now go ahead and take care of one of them because it ain't happening with Rose. He wasn't crazy. See, I thought, no. Can't do that. I, I, I had my mad times with him. <coughs> Many of them. <laughs> yeah. But I was the good one. He was the one that was acting stupid. I keep telling you, don't be stupid, boy. Don't be stupid. Coming in drunk, done been out too long. Where you been? Rose, I was down there drinking with them guys. I said, you better get in this house at a certain time. Because after a certain time, guys is gone, baby. Ain't no more guy. Come on home. <laughs> I just had to do a few things to teach him that I'm not the one. I didn't have to do it all the time, just a few times. And those few times he got the message. Now, it's bad enough that you, ain't, that you didn't go to church and get saved now. Now, back up. I love you, son. Really do love you. Come up on me if you will. Charles never was a, a real fighter against me. I was the tough cookie. And he respected that because he had no other choice. <laughs> That's right. No. So if somebody wants you to turn your back on the Lord and go with them, say, that's not happening, baby. I'm staying with God because at the end of the day, it's going to make all the difference who I stayed with. I ain't going to hell with you. That's right. Think about it. Think about it. See? It's a good life. You can, you can live it. No matter who don't want you to, you can do it. See? He cared about us enough to go through all these things, feel the sorrow, despised by everybody, endured humiliation, all of that, so I could be free tonight. I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound, no more chains holding me. I don't care if you're not going. I, who says I have a Siamese twin? You ain't connected nowhere. Go on to church. I didn't come because he didn't want to come. Go on to church. If she don't want to come, go on to church. That's what you need to do. Determine in your mind, this is about me and God. You just ain't got nothing to do with you. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Don't reject him. If you do, you will live to regret it. You push him aside, push him back here and back there, you will live to regret it.